What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Defiant Labs Productions podcast on YouTube, where we explore the latest news, trends, and developments in the industry. If you guys are watching this, you might be familiar with the Sil Silicon Valley Bank going under. Um, and whether you're a seasoned crypto investor new to the game, don't let this scare you. Look at this as an opportunity to come in and scoop uh, risk assets. Um, so just sit back. We're going to pr provide you with knowledgeable information so you can stay up to date in this rapidly evolving I think space. That would be yeah, there's a, there's a lot to digest, unpack, and talk about in regards to you know what brought me into Bitcoin and, and what got a lot of the early Bitcoiners like interested or put Bitcoin on the radar. For those of you that, that that don't remember, weren't around for it, or, or don't really know the whole story, in 2013, uh, Cyprus Bank in the island of Cyprus um, had significant banking issues, kind of uh, a little bit reminiscent of what we just saw this past weekend in Silicon Valley, where they had a crisis of uh, trust because the country was having uh issues in regards to liquidity and they were looking for ways to secure some capital. So they decided kind of overnight without like letting anybody know that they were going to uh, take a haircut off of every single balance that had over a hundred thousand in their bank accounts. And why that's significant is because Cyprus was traditionally known as a bank where a lot of uh, overseas individuals would store a lot of capital. So it wasn't just like your average, like Cyp uh, Cyprian or whatever. I'm not sure. Cyprian, I think is what they're called. That just had their regular bank balances in there. They might have like a couple thousand euros. It was, they were targeting the bigger balances that were in those accounts to try to make up for their shortfall. So anything over a hundred thousand was going to get a 40% haircut of those funds. So let's say you had a million dollars in that bank account, uh, anything over that hundred thousand. So 900,000 would be subject to a 40% <clears throat> tax and they would just take that money. So, you know, most individuals that heard that were like, oh my God, you know, I have a couple thousand in there. Can they do that to me? Because a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, they target the rich. Like if anybody does their history in regards to how we do taxes in this country, originally the income tax targeted the, the uh, elites and the rich. And then after that, they realized, well, you know, we can tax them. Now we can go after, you know, lower class, middle class. And that's how the taxes came to be here. So they start at the top and then they work their way down. So people got nervous and there was a bank run on, uh, the Cyprus bank accounts and they put a limit on uh, it was something like I think it was like two or three hundred euros per day you could take out of the bank and there were like long lines at the ATM and there was a significant uh, you know effect of trust on the banking system in Cyprus and those of us here in the US were watching and we we're like holy cow like if that could happen there that could happen anywhere and a lot of people here in the United States are like, that'll never happen here. The banking system's too solid. Things are too great. You know, we were in the middle of this, this you know, mega bull run with stocks after the financial crisis. You know, stocks have been ripping since basically 2009, 2010. In 2013, we had like already like gone up like two or three X in the stock market from the low of the market. So people are here like, no, things are great. We're rocking. That'll never happen here. And those of us that were starting to get into Bitcoin and really like study the financial system and really started to look at how our system worked, which is the whole fractional reserve banking model, which I talked about in the newsletter, we were like, wait a minute, like things aren't as solid as people really think. You know what I mean? Like the whole fact that our system is built on um, this fractional reserve banking model, which means that the banks, when they take in your deposits that you put into the bank, they are, are not, they don't have to hold all of those deposits in their bank. They only have to hold a fraction of that on reserves for withdrawal. And I, and I put it in the newsletter and, and, and a lot of people don't really know that this is how things work. When you, when you put that money in the bank, they only have to have, I think, I believe it's like 10% of what you put in there on reserve. So at any given time, let's say that a bank has a billion dollars in, in, in assets, right? Let's say they have a billion dollars in customer deposits. They only have to have a hundred million on reserve mm -hmm. for that bank to be considered solvent. And they don't, so they, what, they don't assume someone's going to come in and take out the full amount. You know, they're just, because it never happens because they're taking user deposits and they're lending it out and they're taking risk with your money and they're earning yields and they're putting in different strategies to make money, which is fine. And I feel like this was a big stress test. Um, for the FTIC insurers and to, to show how safe banks are. We don't know if this is going to have a first, second, third 
order of magnitude effect. Uh, Robert K- Kiyosaki, the guy who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he came out with a tweet. I was last night, like I was reading this last night. He said bailouts begin because this is when the, the Federal Reserve announced that they're going to bail out and print more money, um, more fake money to invade the sick economy. Still recommended, still recommend same response. He says this every time on all his podcasts, buy more gold, buy more silver. And what do you think BC stands for? Bitcoin. Buy some Bitcoin. Take care. Crash landing ahead. He is the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This is like the first book I've ever read before I got into uh, finance. Uh, situation with Silicon Valley Bank. Like I said, it really never happens where the bank is going to be responsible for all their assets at once until they are, which was what we saw on Friday. So we're living in an age, and I talked about this in the newsletter, we're living in an age now where your your traditional bank run, like how it looked in 2013, the bank run was people lining up outside the bank or lining up at ATMs, real long lines, like they did in the Great Depression in the 1930s, like long lines at the bank, right? In 2023, it, it, it takes a tweet, right? It takes something on social media. The traditional bank run was the long lines at the bank. We saw that in the 1930s. We even saw it in Cyprus in 2013, which I referenced earlier, where you had long lines at the ATM, long lines outside the bank branch of people trying to get their funds. 2023, things are a lot different. Not only do we have social media, which we really was on the cusp of it in 2013, um, we're full blast into it now. And you have on your phone, you have your banking app. So whatever bank you bank with, you don't really have to go to, like for me, I rarely ever go to the branch. I have direct deposit into my account for my work and then I bank through my app, right? So what we saw on Friday was the, the, smoke lead to fire on the internet where people were like hearing that SVB was going to be insolvent or didn't have enough funds. And so people went right to their phones in a matter of minutes, in some cases, seconds, and set up wire transfers to transfer funds out of that account. So that's problematic when a bank only holds 10% of their total deposits on with being able to be withdrawal. Once you pass that threshold, now they have to pause withdrawals because of fractional reserve banking. So these individuals are seeing that their wire transfers aren't going through. And again, the 250,000 uh, FDIC is great for an individual that just puts, you know, maybe 10,000, 20,000 or whatever, or, 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 you know, their bank gets check gets deposit into their account. They're safe. They're safe it is the businesses that have their free cash floating capital in there. Right? So small, even small businesses, well within their own possibility, have more than 250000 in that account, right? Middle, middle-sized middle businesses, a couple million, tens of millions mm-hmm. in an account, right? So that two fifty does nothing for them. Their funds get frozen and they can't pay employees. If they can't pay employees, now those employees that only have a couple thousand in the bank, they can't pay, pay their bills. And you see the trickle-down effect that that can have. This one bank, in, like I said in the newsletter, like this happened in one of the richest zip codes in the United States, Silicon Valley. The, account, the, the amount that it costs to live in that part of the country is very, very high. The cost of living is high. A lot of tech jobs there, right? So these aren't like small players. This is a large bank. The second largest bank in the history of our country to fail. Like if it can happen there, why can't it happen at your corner bank over here? Cornerstone Bank or any of these other smaller regional banks that are doing the same thing. The fractional reserve banking model where they only have less than 10% of reserves on deposit. Like this can happen. This is what we've been talking about. This is what Bitcoiners have been talking about. Like the the monsters under the bed. There's like, oh, you Bitcoiners think this is all going to fail. Like the banking system solid. Like what are you talking about? Like we're seeing it happen in real time. And it's so crazy because I keep going, coming back to that scene in the big short, right? Where they're in the casino in, in the uh, the Brad Pitt characters with those two younger guys. And the one guy's getting all excited. He's like, this is it. We're about to get paid. We're about to make money. And the Brad Pitt character's like, stop it. Like this means that a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money and be devastated. Because of your, you know, bet that you made against the market, right? So it's like us Bitcoiners putting all our our, our assets in this in this asset, you know, it's crazy because it's like we're not rooting for the system to fail. It's just like we know it's probably most likely going to fail, and when it does, we'll be paid handsomely when that, that happens. But the the sad reality is, all the people that we've been trying to educate, you know what I mean, and, and let them know that you need to put a little bit of your assets in here just in case. They're all going to get decimated. If when rich dad comes crashing down, if rich dad poor dad is saying buy more Bitcoin, 
take care, crash landing ahead. And this was yesterday at 1.54 a.m. I mean, it's it's probably time. And back to your point about the tweet stuff, information travels fast. You know, anyone could hop on their phone and all pull the money out of the bank. Like they didn't have that back in the day. They didn't have technology like that where everyone has a smartphone. So yeah, and the banking, the banking system never updated. Like they never adjusted to this new era that we're in where access to funds is like snap of a finger. Um, the, the this this model of banking is really from like the early 20th century like we haven't really we haven't adjusted to anything like we haven't changed anything and we're we're seeing the the cracks in the structure as a result of that and you know whoever it was that created bitcoin and and set this revolution in motion like saw that like they are not doing anything to they, they just think that this system is untouchable and nothing's ever going to happen and all the money that they printed in 2008 and then all the money they printed in 2020, it's like there's consequences for that. And these are the consequences that we're seeing. And I, I want to move on to the next topic, uh, talking about Biden really quick, how President Biden spoke this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sure. the, the, the president of the United States spoke at nine o'clock this morning to the nation. He spoke, which, you know, the president should do to try to bring some calm to the situation to basically say that. You know, the banking system is safe. You know, your funds are safe. Uh, FDIC stepped in. The federal government stepped in. They did the right thing. You don't have to worry about anything. He he mentioned it about four or five times. You don't have to worry. Things are safe. Don't worry. Things are safe. And after about three or four minutes of saying that over and over again, he walked off the podium and the media was trying to blast him with questions like, who's the next one to fail? What's going like? Good question. Like the liberal media who normally protects the president. Again, I'm not going to get political, but like that's a fact. The liberal media who 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 gives a lot of softball questions to the president and makes him look pretty good. Or if you notice, he was walking away and they were hammering him. Like the first question I heard was, what's the next bank to fail? Are you confident? Like they were just smoking mm -hmm. him with questions. And he just like pimp walked away from the, the, the stand. And it's like the fact that the president on Monday morning after a bank failed on Friday, felt the need to get in front of the, the the nation to say, oh, everything's safe. Everything's great. Don't look. No man behind the curtain. That means you saw. Great. You get out. You know, it's like it, it, it's supposed to make you feel comfortable. That's but what I'm saying people expect the system to always work and to always succeed. But that's not the case, especially it's been long overdue. Like, it's, you want to know something that most people don't know? What? Let me tell you something that most people don't know, that this should make you really pause and think about the <clears throat> banking system. If you want to get Let's say you 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 want to get uh seven thousand dollars out of your bank, right? You show up to the bank today and try to get that seven thousand dollars out of the bank. I would say seven or eight times out of ten, they're not going to give it to you. They're going to tell you come back tomorrow and we'll give it to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you call ahead if you want anything over five thousand. Now this isn't going to happen one hundred percent of the time, but more often than not, and I and I know this because it happened to me personally. I went there for I, I went to the bank to take five thousand out, and and th and I got static. And they told me next time you want to do this, call ahead. Right now, you're thinking this bank should have like banks have millions of dollars, right? There's you have there's cash at the bank. Like what do you? You're a bank. You have money, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have a lot of money on hand at a bank. Yeah, that's by design. The system by design. They take your money, and your money goes into another investment. And if that investment goes bad. We saw what happened on Friday. Just a quick, uh, yo, you're going to like this. Let's just look at this real quick. Let's just appreciate the Bitcoin chart. Look at that hourly candle. Holy moly. Look at that. We're Dude, we're almost at 24K. This was a great buy. Was this a great dip buying out? You bought a little bit here, did dip buying? Yeah, this is, this, is where, this is where you see the resilience of Bitcoin. Why, not yeah. even that. This is why Bitcoin was created. And again, I'm not saying the system's going to fail now or tomorrow or, you know, we're getting that doomsday. But when when the sky starts falling, look at what Bitcoin does. It's yeah. Noah's Ark, bro. Like, this is Noah's Ark. When the system collapses, Bitcoin is Noah's Ark. Look what Bitcoin <laughs> does when shit starts to go crazy. Like, if you turn on CNBC and you watch about an hour of it today, like, dudes are panicking. Yeah. Another thing I want to talk about, banking stocks halted trading today. Charles Charles Schwab was down like 18%. They halted trading. Bank of America. Look at like that. banking stocks are just dipping today, like hard. Yeah. Pump, getting pummeled. The faith yeah. in the banking system. 
before I jumped up, we jumped on this podcast today. I saw a couple of people that don't really talk money at all asking talk the money. question, asking the question, should I take my money out of the bank? Average everyday people that never have conversations about money that talk about anything but money put up putting up status posts. Should I take mm-hmm. my money out of the bank? Right. And I'm seeing that on my feed. Like, how, how is that playing out across the country? How many people are asking that question? And if people are asking the question, and they how do many it. people are doing it? Yeah. How many people are doing it? Are going on the bank and going back and saying, I remember back in the day when my grandma used to say, put your money under the mattress. Maybe that's where I need to put it, right? They're not ready for the crypto conversation yet. They're not ready for Bitcoin, but they're not feeling so great about the bank. Mm-hmm. So like, wh- now, now, where do you go from there? Th- those are the people that we can reach, right? Those are the people that we have a chance to reach now because now the 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 contemplation is in their mind now they're they're contemplating like wait a minute this these bitcoin guys and these crypto guys like ah they're over here they're kind of crazy i feel safe just putting my money in the bank now you don't feel safe putting money in your bank now you're panicking now what do, if i don't put it in the bank i don't want my house to get robbed like where do i put it i, I what do i do what do i do with my hard earned money right those are the type of conversations people are having with themselves and this is this is like our window, I think. This is going to be our window of time to to really really reach some people that were pre-contemplative, had no no thoughts of of even being open to something else besides just putting their money in the bank or putting mm-hmm. their money in the traditional system. Like those people, their their confidence is getting shaken. They're seeing this happen, and they're you know you work hard all week and you put your money in the bank and 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 you expect it to be there when you go to get it, right? Or you expect it to be there to pay your bills. These people at Silicon Valley, can you imagine going to work last week, working all week, you know, Thursday, going to bed, waking up Friday, get your paycheck. You're like, Oh, I got to pay all these bills. And all of a sudden the bank that you're going to pay your bills from is frozen and you can't pay any bills. And you can't, your mortgage can't get paid. You can't pay your babysitter. You can't pay. Like you can't go buy grocery. And you're just like, what is going on? Right. Can you Mm -hmm. imagine that? It happened at a bank in the United States of America and one of the richest zip code. It didn't happen in Compton, right? It didn't happen in downtown Niagara Falls or, you know, one of these places that you would consider to be maybe less than desirable or, or, or less than up to. This happened at Silicon Valley Bank in one of the richest zip codes in the United States of America. If it happened there. It could happen anywhere. Where can it happen? Right? Could happen Niagara Falls. And again, the, the, the government came in and saved this bank, right? They're mm-hmm. they're with the bank with now understand what the government is doing. The FDIC can insure up to 250k. You know how much that represents of that bank? Seven percent of total deposits. Mm-hmm. 93% represents over that number. That's what the panic was. It wasn't that, oh, you know, maybe that ha- if that happened at Cornerstone Bank over here, it wouldn't be as big of a deal in Niagara Falls because I doubt that there's a lot besides of you know the small the couple of businesses that might have accounts there. Mm-hmm. A majority of those accounts would probably be safe because they're under that 250k. But some of these banks, these these little bit larger banks that the majority of their of their balance sheet make up businesses or individuals with higher net worths, way over that 250. That's scary. Yeah, that's very scary. Yeah, that is very scary. Wow. Yeah, I think you put a you laid down a really good thought process on you know and i think uh, it, it'll be very easy to interpret for a, a newer listener but yeah yeah guys you just have to prepare you know ex- hope for the best expect the worst if you're hesitant about bitcoin and cryptocurrency this might be the time to start educating yourself you know what is there why are people why are these weird crazy bitcoiners keep telling me to put my money in bitcoin maybe it's time to start educating you know that's what i think you know Paul- Paul Tudor Jones, who's a multi-billion dollar uh, investor, was saying three or four years ago, maybe yeah, three years ago, around 2020, that he was putting 2% of his entire net worth into Bitcoin mm-hmm. because he's like, yeah, maybe maybe it does something, maybe it doesn't, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And, mm-hmm. and think of what 2% of, you know, $2 billion is. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of money. But like, the fact is that if everything goes to shit, your 2% covers all the stuff that the other 98%. Yeah. So why would you not, why would you not put like even one or like one or 2%? No. Like, I think and again, this is not financial true. advice. I'm not telling you what to do, but why wouldn't you like you get car insurance? Not because you want to get into an accident. 
But in case you do, everything is covered, right? You'll, oh, you'll gladly, I like, I you'll, like gladly that. You'll, you'll gladly pay <laughs> car insurance for the rest of your life and never get into a car accident, right? Gladly pay that. I mean, yeah, it kind of sucks to have to pay it, but like, at least you can sleep well knowing that God forbid I get into a car accident and it's a major one that I have somebody behind me making me whole, right? Mm -hmm. That's the point of insurance. That's what Bitcoin is, right? That, I mean, for, for, for those of us that really believe in it, we were, we were high, much higher percentage of that in there. But if you don't know a lot or you really feel safe with that traditional system today or, or the last three days should make you at least pause, take a step back and say, Am I doing myself a disservice by not putting 1% or 2% of all my investments? Let's say you invest $100 tomorrow. You can't put $1 or $2 into Bitcoin. That's silly. You know what I mean? Because yeah. what happens if that $98 gets wiped out? That $2 that you put in Bitcoin is going to get you back the other 98 in that doomsday scenario. Look what Bitcoin did. You showed it. We were at in the 19s on Friday <laughs> when that bank first went down. I, like, that's the thing. It's like it gives you that head fake, even with Corona, like Bitcoin will go down with everything else. But then once everybody starts to realize it'll oh, be the shit. first thing to go back up when everybody's like, oh, shit, the, the only thing that's actually. What we at, like, the only thing that I actually own on <laughs> my mm -hmm. own bank with Bitcoin, the only thing I own in self-custody is Bitcoin. When everything else is taking that shit skyrockets. I feel really good about Bitcoin's price action right now. I like this this weekly candle. This we held really nicely, and it's a bullish weekly candle. It's not like it's like a reverse hammerhead. Like this is the way this candle weekly clo closed. It closed bullish. You know, it's it's a it's a hammer. It's not an inverse hammer, but it's a hammer. Um, dude, this could this could get excited. Dude, this is everybody. Exciting. Everybody keeps talking about we we haven't had Bitcoin in a raising rate environment, right? Which is true. It's a very valid, very valid point to make against Bitcoin. I will give you that, right? We don't, we don't know yet how that full picture plays out. Also, what we didn't know was how Bitcoin would react when a major bank failed. Because in 2008, we did mm -hmm. not have Bitcoin when Washington Mutual failed. Never got to see how it, how it could react, right? So we saw Silicon Valley Bank fail on Friday. And initially we had the dip, but mm -hmm. we're seeing today once the smoke clears, how Bitcoin reacts when a major financial institution collapses in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Wow. We saw it rip 25%. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you not put one or 2% of your investable assets into something like Bitcoin? That's the question you have to ask yourself. That's the question you guys should be sitting down and thinking about for this week. You know, don't wait until the major headline hits and then you start doing that. You know, that's start preparing. You know, just, that's the biggest thing. I think this was a very good pod. I think we made everything clear. Um, I do got to get going though. So I am good. We're going to wrap this up a little bit shorter. Uh, but do you have any last minute thoughts, Don, about, you know, about what's going on and for the viewers? The, uh, the last thing I want to talk about really, really quick is this morning on CNBC, they were saying that the word on the street now is that the Fed is going to pause, that they're not going to raise. It went from 25 basis points to, 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 to 50 after mm -hmm. Powell spoke last week. And now they're saying on CNBC that the the consensus seems to be that they're going to pause. They're not going to, because this, the reason why Silicon Valley Bank failed, I, I was listening last night to Bloomberg. Because of their balance, rates. their balance sheet was good. They yeah. didn't do anything wrong. They weren't over leveraged. They did everything the way that a bank should be doing things under the system. They didn't do it like FTX did. They didn't do any crazy over leveraged trading. The rising of the interest rates this quick in this Bond. short span yeah. collapsed them. Right. And I think the Fed sees that and they're going to have to pause and turn the printers back on. And when the money printer goes burr, we know what Bitcoin does when that happens. <laughs> and it was always inevitable. It was always inevitable that the money printers were going to have to come back on. We weren't quite sure how, yeah. but they turned them on for Silicon Valley. And I think they'll turn them back on again when things continue to get bad. Awesome. Don't trust Verify. <clears throat> Don't trust Verify, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a like, subscribe, and leave a comment below if you have any like you know concerns and thoughts about what we just shared. Thank you, guys.